Hello and welcome to my first ever visual scripting tutorial for Craft Studio. Visual scripting is the programming backbone of Craft Studio. Uh, there's also the, the text-based Lua language as well. But in this tutorial we're going to really cover the uh, visual scripting. Um, now I'm not a programmer, I haven't done, uh, I'm trained as that really, uh, but what I have done is I've done quite a lot of work with things like Scratch and I teach these kind of, uh, these kind of concepts as, as well. So what I'm hoping is, it's not going to be too much of a leap for me and hopefully uh, for people who are new to programming and hopefully if it will give you an introduction to programming and then help you and open up that world so you can do the sort of text based stuff later on. But for now, we're just going to stick to um, the visual scripting language, which looks a little bit like this. To make the visual scripting language work, we're going to have to create a scene. So if we go over to the Scenes tab over here, we're going to create our first scene. And we're going to call this scene Game. And press Create. And at the moment, our scene is completely empty. So let's fill it with a player, something that we want to move. So we're going to click, go over here to this star and we're going to create a game object. And we're going to call this game object player and press create. And at the moment the player is just a point in space, completely there's nothing there, it's completely empty, but we can we can transform its coordinates, its position, and we can transform its orientation and we can also transform its scale although there's nothing there to really transform at the moment but there you go it's it's completely empty at the moment we need to attach something to this uh empty a uh, game object now what we could attach to it is a camera a model renderer a map renderer and even a scripted behavior oh, so what we'll do is we're going to add a model renderer and I've already created a little model and hopefully you have too. Uh, so let's click this, add, and I'll click my robot duck and close. There he is. Um, so he's a, just a, a duck, a kind of, uh, I call him a robot duck, but really it's just a cube with different faces on to tell me which direction he's facing him. Uh, I've added legs so we can do some animation later on as well. So now we've got our player. He's got, we can move him about with his position in the game scene. We've got a model attached to this game object. Uh, but we also need, we could also attach a script. So let's attach a script. And there's no, we haven't made a script yet. So let's click plus um, and create something called hello. Oops. Hello world. And we'll make sure it's on script. And we'll create that and close it. Um, so now in our script area, we can see we've created an empty script. So we're going to come back to that in a second. I just want to concentrate on the scene at the moment because there's one more piece of the puzzle that we need to add in. Uh, I'm going to add another game object and I'm going to call this game object cam because we're going to add a camera to our scene. There it is. So again, it's empty at the moment. I'm going to just go over here and add a camera. There. And you can see that pyramid shaped wireframe area. We need a camera in our scene to be able to actually view the project when it when we run the project from the administration tab. If we didn't have a camera, we wouldn't see anything. It would just be a blank screen. Okay, so it's sort of looking at our duck. Um, at the moment, there's no preview of the camera. It'd be nice if there's a little preview down here eventually, but there is no preview yet. Um, but hopefully there will be in the fu in future versions of Craft Studio. So let's just test this out and see if the camera is actually working. So if we go back to our home tab, uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, this project knows what we what we want it to do. So we need to go to administration, and in our startup scene, we need to select a scene, which is game. So we'll just click, uh, make sure that's selected, and press close. What will happen now is when I press run project and I look at our project window, um, 
we can see that the camera is working. It's pointing at our little robot duck, and uh, and we get a little runtime report as well. The report really just uh, gives us it says when the game started and the game has exited properly. And I've also got some error messages in the middle, which uh, I'm not too sure about, but they don't affect the game. So let's close this runtime report. But we're going to use that to test some uh, ideas about. Uh, the visual scripting and we're going to use um, this hello world visual script and create our first visual script together so let's double click this to open it up and this is the initial default view that you're going to get when you open up your first visual script we've got these two kind of blocks by the look of it in the middle and we've got these tabs at the top uh, going from event, flow, variables, maths, game object, assets, input, and miscellaneous. And it gives us uh, a different rundown of each of what these things are in, the, in this area here. So let's let's figure out what all this stuff is about. So one of these events, so we're in events now, and they're green. And it says on awake and on update. Now on awake is when you first run your program, when you first sort of run it, um, any script in there that kind of is, uh, is is out and about gets woken up. So it's like when I get woken up, I will do whatever's in here, and I'll do that just once. The on update function uh, repeats itself. It just keeps going and going and going, and it does that at 60 times every second. So it just loops and loops and loops until you stop the program. Now the way we can kind of prove all this <clears throat> to see if it's actually working, so we can program our visual script to print things out in the debug window when we run the project and we're going to drag and click in something that says print and we'll do that to both of them and it says print and then value so we've got to kind of think well, well what do we do with the value well if we go to variables <coughs> we can print text so here's text so we're going to drag text into that one and we're going to drag text into that one. And on awake, we're going to go, hello world, I'm awake, dot, dot, dot. And in this one, we're going to go, gosh, I'm update, updating, oops, spell it right. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so we've got these two commands. One which is like when it wakes up, it's going to print that, and then 60, 60 times a second, it's going to do this. It's going to print these things in that little um, debug window. So, should we try it out? So, hello world, let's just make sure we've got everything right. So, we go on to player. There is the script, it's in the game. So, when we start the game, by pressing run project it should yeah there we go there it is in the background let's stop it Dink. okay the game is exited properly and go to the top and see what happened so the game started the awake function started and it printed hello world I'm awake and then it started gosh I'm updating gosh I'm updating gosh 60 times a second that's what this program is doing. It's it's printing out in the debug window, hello world, I'm, I'm awake, and then gosh, I'm updating. It's doing that 60 times a second. Um, and that's the end of this tutorial, really. So let's just cover what we've done so far. So far, so far we've created a game scene. We've created a game object within that scene. And we've attached um, our model renderer and a script to that game object. And then what we've done is we've written a script We've attached that script to the uh, to the that model, okay, that game object that also contains the model as well. And we've run that script and we've proved that it can it works and it's running in the background. So this is the the the, the very first essential elements that you're going to need to do to create any kind of game. And that's why I'm starting off with this tutorial it's to keep it nice and simple. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we're going to make our game object and our model move through the scene and move through space and actually then attach some uh, keyboard commands so the model will respond to when, whenever we press a keyboard and we can actually move around in space.
So I hope that's helpful, and I look forward to uh, look forward to hearing your comments. And if you like it and subscribe, that'd be great too. Thanks very much. Now, bye bye.